Sure, let's do it. Might not win the tournament, but we can have some fun playing it. So you guys have seen uh, blindfold chess before. Well, I've got a new idea on the whole concept. I'm calling this one mirror chess. And holy moly, is this variant confusing. I like it. It's just so chaotic, it's perfect. <laughs> it's chaotic for all the wrong reasons, too. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so that bishop's actually here, and it takes there. There we go. It's castle. But yeah, if you're really good at blindfold chess, uh, you might have some chance playing this. Um, but I'm guessing that most people would struggle trying to play this sort of thing. Uh, and if you're not good at blindfold, it probably makes this that much harder. So, yeah. This is what I'm going to call the Friday Funhouse. At least for the duration of this stream, that's what I'm calling it. Bishop takes g5. And you see we got the pin along the file here, right? This is... I'm really proud of this mod, which took me, like, no time whatsoever to code up. Or to invent, develop, um, prototype. Pick your verb of choice. Um, I'm surprised just how crazy of a um, invention I was able to invent here. Uh, okay, so I kind of have to take. Can't ignore that forever. Um, suppose I need to get my king out of there. So let's see what we can do. Alright, I can't fork, so I need to run uh, back here. Alright, bring it! Oh, well that's not bringing it. So I'm threatening uh, the e6 pawn. Okay, he defends. Uh, rook af1 now. Just gonna see if I could pile some pieces on the f file. Um, Alright, don't like my king on h2. Although I can't exactly move the king away either. So, I'm going to move him forward. He's going to play a more active role in this defense. Um, Alright, let's simplify, because this is getting pretty nuts on the king's side. Let's take one of those. And then, uh, this is loose. Ah, he takes that way. Very clever. Um, I think now I just move in, right? Uh, queen g8. And okay, sure, his queen can move toward my pieces, but um, it's not like my pieces are entirely inactive. Oops, there's the knight. Okay. So we're hitting the queen. Queen's threatening to ruin my day. Somehow. Um, 
Still haven't involved my other knight. I'm not sure how to untangle from this mess. Let's try queen h8. Because my knight protects my queen. Alright, so we gotta play king h4. Oh, crud. He's got mate in two. Yeah, no, that's well played. Uh, I have to go back. Yeah, mate in one is not always obvious. Um, okay. He's threatening mate in two a different way. Can't exactly ignore him forever. Um, this is gonna no. I'm I'm kind of lost here. I'm just trying to figure out how can I prolong my suffering. Um, because he checks me and then he's got queen h1, so I have to sack my queen. Which is awful. Um, and he's threatening me on the move, so I have to run for it, even though I can't really run. I have to go back. And we'll see if I can hold this at all. Uh, I wager I can't. Pretty sure he's got me. Yeah, there's no holding it at this point. Well played. Well played. I played overly aggressively there. <clears throat> All right, let's try this again. If my opponent moves, I might have a chance to score a point this tournament. If he doesn't, I might also have a chance to score a point this tournament. Yeah, I won. Alright. Puts me up to 63rd place. I think we could say goodbye to my Blitz rating, though. At least while I'm playing like this, and at least while it's Friday. This is going to be a little more challenging than usual. Okay. Well, I'm not getting an opponent, so let's pick a different tournament. Um, we'll play some classical chess. Might not be a bad thing. Tenno. Ooh, here we are. Jimmy J. Alright, we'll answer that with E5. Oh, King's Gambit. Um, I'm gonna play Bishop C5 against the King's Gambit. Okay, and then we need to play D6 to shore up the center. Um, yeah, so he's threatening to try to build a big center. Now, if I remember right, I've played against this sort of thing before. Um, it's really nothing for me to be afraid of. So, I think I just continue with knight f6. And then, I forget if I go forward or backward here, but Back seems okay. So. Hey, no joke. How's it going? It's Friday. So, we're doing some Friday Funhouse chess. Yeah. I don't know. 
The knights have seen better days. Somehow it doesn't look so bad when um, the knights are rotated the other way. So we'll trade queens. Um, and then I guess pin this knight, right? Let's pin it. And maybe castle. Yeah, uh, castle to get out of the pin. And check. I'm still hitting the knight here. Um, I think I just take it. And then I could take the pawn over here. I think if my opponent saw what I was doing, he'd be kind of horrified by it. Um. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, that that's not at all the point here. I'm just having fun, but yeah, it, it does remind people of that sort of thing. Um, so we'll take here. And then I think I just take this bishop. And he takes, and he's threatening my uh, g-pawn. I don't think I'm too concerned about giving the g-pawn, though. Although I could easily defend it, so why not, right? And then I could play uh, rook, to e, uh, rook d8. Uh, I'm sorry, rook e8 there. And then knight e7 to follow. It's all possible. It definitely gives my knight a way to move and be mobile. Or I could just play knight f7 right away. Uh, or knight e7 right away. And my knight can't exactly go upward here, so... Um, so I need to think about how I'm going to finish mobilizing him. Um, my opponent's looking to get a good end game here. I don't blame him. So let's uh, at least defend the bishop. Maybe threaten to get our king toward the center a little bit further. Right, so I was going to do this, and it still looks fine. Now I could shuffle my knight over uh, to c8 here, and then uh, upward to d6. No, that's not it. Um, this is where it gets disorienting. <laughs> okay. But yeah, getting the knight from uh, this square to that square is no easy feat. I could shuffle the knight to uh, c8, but um, that doesn't get me very far. Okay. Yeah, let me exchange rooks and bring my other rook out. I'm really not concerned. As long as I move my pieces to the right squares, It'll all be okay. I put them on the wrong squares, that's just bad news. <laughs> um, right, so I was going to exchange this rook as well. I just don't fear this endgame. So i got to move my knight somewhere. I was intending here. Uh, there it is. Um, and now I can move my bishop away. And uh, my knight can take post where the bishop stood. Incidentally, that hits the pawn over here. See that, right? I've given up on coordinate notation with black. It's awful. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's bishop b1. Bishop takes a2 is being threatened. And then I could play knight g6. Now my bishop might be a bit isolated at b1, maybe be happier on a different square, but um, 
I'm also trying to discourage knight takes bishop. It's very subtle. Alright, so we're doing bishop b1. I can't resist. So the goal is to win this lost endgame somehow. Let's try to exchange knights. I expect he's probably going to decline. You know, I probably should have threatened, um, should have done bishop a2 first. Oh, that's another reason I should have done that. Crap. <laughs> uh, okay. That's a problem. Uh, okay. We're going to run the king toward the center. Now, I expect he's just going to take pawn number two here, right? He's going to take on a7, and then I play uh, knight c4, discovering an attack on the knight on h7. Hey, welcome. I'm trying something new today. We'll see how it works out. So far, it's netted me a loss. Um, but that's okay. Chess is a game. We can have fun playing it. Alright, so we're going to fork uh, this pawn here and that pawn there. I'm not sure what he's doing to try to win this. Uh, I don't have any motivation to play bishop takes knight at the moment. Just FYI. I expect this is probably going to end in a draw. Uh, or one of us is going to hang something and it's going to be stupid. But most likely this is going to be a draw. Right, that's why I chose not to move my bishop to a2. Because uh, then it would have to go to b3 next. There really isn't far to go from there. Um, as in, it's kind of trapped if it stands on b3. But now I've got to move it, so... Um, I guess I have to go all the way back here. And I guess he's going to move this bishop soon. Oh, shoot. He, his other point is that this pawn's defended. I did not see that. Um, I suppose my knight has to reroute via a5 to c6. From c6 here, it'll be attacking... Uh, I didn't mean that. I meant it'd be attacking e5. And again, my king just stands really close to trying to take this e5 pawn. Okay, so he's trying to discourage king e5. Um, I don't know, man. He has kept me at bay so far, but I think I can force the issue. So we're going to kick the knight, which is actually going to invite him to just move up here to g5. And then I'll play h6. And, okay, yeah, he's got um, knight to e6 from there. Um, but in that way, my king can play king e to d6, uh, protecting uh, the pawn on c7. Okay, so he's not looking for that kind of fight right now. Um, I'm still going to go forward and threaten to take... Uh, just go forward with my king. Uh, incidentally, what he could do... Hmm, that's not what I was afraid of. Maybe I should have feared this, but it's not what I was afraid of. Um, this is not going to be a simple conversion for him, and all my pieces can congregate on the e5 square pretty easily. You have accepted the exchange. Huh. Not sure what you're referring to. Okay. 
Yeah, it's going to be a little tricky for me to shuffle my pieces here. So I'm just going to apply more pressure on e5. Got this indirect pin against uh, uh, d. F Wait, that's uh, I don't know. F4. So, mm, just waiting for things to resolve themselves here. I don't want to push uh, my a pawn right away. Because the farther forward I push it, the more of a target it becomes. Um, but I don't have ways to make progress here. I think I have to take that. And then my knight has to move. Uh, this is the best place to move it. Incidentally, piling up on e5 again. So e5 is a target, g4 is a target. Uh, denying his king access to the e4 square. Uh, he's probably going to play knight c3. I had to guess. That's probably there because he wants to defend this. Oh, right. Could also just discover attacks against my pieces, which is pretty powerful too. But nobody's saying I gotta take e5, right? I could just take g4. Um, that's not g4, that's b4. So now I've got a passed pawn out here. Oh, my knight's trapped. Um, is that an issue? No, that's not an issue. What am I afraid of? Bring it. Chase my knight. See if I care. The point is that if he plays king g3, um, king g3 this way, um, then my knight's able to move over to f1. Now, I did see this possibility, this um, knight g5, but I see that also my knight's escaping. So, who gets the last laugh now? Probably him somehow. He's probably got some nasty trick somewhere. But, um, for now I'm laughing, so... It's not bad. Now, I'm debating, do I want to play h5 or bishop h5? I think h5 is too risky. It puts my pawn too close to his pieces. But it would allow my bishop to move if I needed to. Uh, we're going to do h5. We're going to seize the day. Hopefully it'll work out. Oh, also, if I did bishop... No, if I did bishop h5, he couldn't do bishop e2. Now he can do bishop e2, but it would sack his d pawn to do... Or e pawn to do so. Um. <laughs> ah, so yeah, this I'm just having some fun with the site at this point. <laughs> yeah, this, this version of chess is way more difficult because in addition to having to do all the analysis, you have to move the pieces correctly. Like, there's a dexterity challenge to all of this. Um, it's just absolutely ridiculous. And so far I'm enjoying it. Um, note that my bishop on uh, this square, c7, is still loose, which is going to enable some shot where you can threaten my g-pawn. Um, I'm not sure what to do about that. So yeah, he's going to pick up my g-pawn. Uh, couldn't be helped. Maybe I could have done bishop h5 earlier. So, um... 
Oh wait, I could push the g-pawn. That would be a diversion, and then I could take on e5. There we go. Right. But now I just use my king to take the pawn. Some of these moves are obvious. Kill the knight, let him take your bishop. Then you have two pawns. No, but uh, the issue back here, uh, you're saying, like, just defend this and kill the knight somehow. Or maybe this is many moves ago, I'm not sure. But he could check me, and he doesn't have to do knight takes pawn. Like, if I move my king over, not there, not there, uh, or to move my king, he would just do this discovery right away and win my bishop, even with his knight still stuck here on h4. Um, okay, so now he's threatening knight e4, which I can pretty easily rebuff with this. And now I've got a tactical threat myself, being the knight on f3 and the king on c4. But, yeah, he's just going to defend the e-pawn, uh, and everything's going to liquidate on that square, I think. Uh, okay. Well, he forks my pieces. I kind of have a moral obligation, if not an actual one, to take. All right. Now we want to be on um, the back side of the pawn, so we want to be, like, over here somewhere. I guess preferably here. Um, shoot. Where does my bishop belong? Do I have threats if I go here? Yeah, this way I'm on uh, his half of the board. Still have a passed pawn. Um... We're going to try a bishop exchange, another bishop exchange, so I won that on time. I don't know, it was probably a draw, as I was suggesting earlier. Uh, okay, it was probably many moves ago. Yeah. yeah. If I had multiple passed pawns, that would have compensated. I did briefly consider that and then kind of freaked out about it, and it's Friday, and whatever. All right, e4. Holy moly, my opponent's gone berserk. All right, knight of three. Uh, c3. This is apparently a way you can play the Sicilian. All right, um, I think I could just take that. It's not the strongest line in the world, but uh, d4, and I think I'm sound. Um, then I could play things like bishop d3 and just castle. Uh, that loses a pawn, buddy, right? Like, am I missing something? I'm pretty sure that loses the C pawn. Uh, we're gonna go for it. Oh wait, no, he just blocks with his pawn. Uh, okay, so I have a decision: Do I go back to C two or E two? Both look pretty inviting. C two looks best somehow. Because I'm not blunted by this pawn, not blunted by the knight. Although I'd like to move the knight and just plant the bishop where it stands, but no, c2 looks fine. Right, so that's in the cards, for sure. Um, push uh, a4, right? Because he doesn't have his bishop on b7 yet. 
All right, so he's threatening B3. Um, do I just let it happen? What am I supposed to do here? I don't know the Sicilian. Uh, I'm going to learn it the hard way, though. So, I think I'm fine here. I'm not too afraid of b3. It does clamp my queen side a bit, but um, I'm not afraid of it. So now I could play queen e2, and I'm hitting um, this pawn over here on c4. Now I just take c4. What's my opponent doing? All right, so queen takes c4. Maybe. All right. Knight takes c4. All right, so he's preventing me from castling for the time being. Um, we're just going to exchange and take the center, make a really big center, and hopefully not get mated. Um, all right, so I have to play bishop d2 to defend the c pawn. Okay, so now I just take on d7 and play knight e5 again. Or maybe I don't. Maybe I just play c4 outright. What am I afraid of? Why would I not take d7, though? So confused. In fact, yeah, why don't I just play a5? And I can threaten to pin and win the knight on d7. Oh, but his knight on c3 would cover bishop a4. But now I could take c3, rook takes c3, bishop a4 anyway. And uh, then he's got bishop c8. Yeah, I can't amplify pressure further. So it behooves me, after all, to take on d7 first. And the tactics just work favorably this way. And then I play my knight to e, uh, e5 check. And this insertion of those two moves has strengthened my a5 push um, for multiple reasons. So now I just check in. If he goes to the wrong square, I'm just winning the rook in the corner, or winning an exchange. Um, but yeah, now he's had to block in his bishop, so my pieces are pretty active. Even if somehow I am losing a pawn, which I don't think I am, I, I, this is plenty of compensation. Right, so now I just check on c6 and take on a7. He moves the rook away somewhere. Um, could also consider rook c1 here. No, that wouldn't work. thought I saw something that worked here, though. Oh wait, I checked with the knight. It's interference. It's so knight c6 check, and now I just take uh, the knight over here in c3. All right, so yeah, I'm just going to take the rook and be happy. I'm up in exchange, and I'm threatening the knight. All right, so I could just take that, or I could check him again. If I check, 
moves the king, and I have to take trade bishops, and then I could trade bishop for knight. Um, yeah, let's give that a go. This position looks strong enough that I can afford to be slightly inaccurate in how I play it. So now we just trade this here. I have to do that, otherwise... Yeah, and he might have been able to insert knight takes pawn, threatening uh, my king and rook. Uh, but he didn't do that, so we're not going to worry about it. And now I'll just move my king forward. And just win the endgame. How hard could that be, right? Um, so we're going to play rook to c1. Follow that by rook c2, and get my other rook on the second rank. I expect he's just going to play... I'm sorry, not c2, c7. Um, check. Want to develop the rook and not get checked. Alright, so... Let's anchor that on a light square. By that I mean this. Um, behind enemy lines. Now that he's not going to check me anymore. Get over here so I have room in which to check his king. Okay, we're going to move the king. Oh, crap! <laughs> okay. Yeah, that was fantastic. Um, let's see if we can hang the other rook, too. Whatever. It's Friday. Okay. See, I told you there is a dexterity challenge to this. Um, there's a challenge commentating uh, while playing this as well. Although, I've got a passed pawn. I'm going to win this somehow. You watch. Uh, you, saw, you heard it here, folks. You heard it here first. Um, I'm going to win this. Or maybe draw it. You never know. Okay, we have to sack. It's kind of awful. But what else could I do? Oh, well, this could be worse. Could be a lot better, but it could be a lot worse. So I'm threatening rook takes bishop. It's a subtle threat. Alright. I'm still threatening rook takes bishop. I have to go this, oh, this way. Um, yeah, he's dealt with my threat. Uh, I think I could resign that against the 2000. He probably understands how to checkmate like that. Yeah. No, you're right. You can't fault me for playing on for a minute there. I didn't spend too much of his time. But, yeah, once it became clear that he actually knew how to stop my pawn and make threats, um, then I threw in the towel. I could have made that last another five minutes or so, but, you know. <laughs> hey, there was a possibility it could have worked. Alright, so I'm down three rating points. That's okay. Alright, I get white again. Another Sicilian. Okay, let's play this to C3 Sicilian this time, without playing knight f3 first. 
Uh, I can play e5 here, right? And then just play d4. I think this is okay. Uh, sure, let's... Oops, that's not knight f3. There's knight f3. I think this looks okay. And we'll play some boring move. Uh, so I just take... Alright, so what do I do about this bishop check? Um, I don't exactly want to exchange bishops, although I do enjoy endgames. Maybe I do want to exchange bishops. That is his good bishop. Yeah, it's my bad bishop, so it's not terrible for me to exchange it. Um, oh, okay. This is another reason to have played knight d2, is that um, in this particular position, I don't think I can castle. If I castle, he just does bishop takes bishop, knight takes bishop, knight takes d4. Um, that's unclear. Let's play it and see what happens. Maybe just throws in knight takes d4 immediately. No, I'm okay. I survived. Um, but I do want to exchange my bad bishop for... that's not it. That's not it, too. I do want to exchange my bad bishop here. And then let's see if I can... Actually, this looks good, too. Yeah, queen d2. It's probably not going to exchange on d2, but this allows me to play knight c3 and knight e4. So I'll just develop. I could play my knight up to d6. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he takes it. I think I do pawn takes now. I think my center is just overwhelming. And then we'll play rook b1. Obviously, he's playing b5. Um. But, I don't know what he's up to. I can just do subtle threats. And by subtle threats, I mean things that might actually force him to make concessions. Um, is that a concession? What's he going to do in response to this? Is he going to move his h-pawn? Okay, he is. Uh, that lets my knight forward. Threatening to just take the rook. Oh, incidentally, yeah, I have this interesting f4 idea now. Um... Although that would hang my knight, wouldn't it? I don't know. I think my knight's okay. If he does a discovered attack to try to win my knight, I just play knight g6. Uh, I meant knight g6, not pawn. Pawns don't move that way. Um, or I could sack on f5 also. Why don't I just play g3? Yeah, why remove my knight from a well-posted post? The knight's applying pressure on f5. I was going to play d5 next and try to uh, undermine his center.
Uh, let's play a4. Under minus queenside. That's going to be my way of forming an inroad toward the center, and eventually getting d5 in, which would weaken stuff. Um, oh, he's threatening a knight fork. Okay, so I don't have all day to dilly-dally with this stuff. Um, what do I do about the knight fork? I use my king. Oh, this is good. Oh, but he's threatening multiple knight forks. I have to just take the knight. How boring. Alright. So, now I play d5, right? Applying pressure against e6, wherever it is. Um, okay, well he's going to take my d-pawn, so that's bad news. Uh, he's probably also going to try to threaten mate afterwards, so let's just play this quickly and hope he doesn't notice. I think he suspects something. Yeah, okay, well this is not working so well. Um, I guess I have to play knight g2. That's about as disgusting as things can get, but, um, yeah, my position's falling apart. He's going to eventually take on g2 with just a pawn plus endgame. And hopefully he understands rook endgames, and this will be, uh, fairly painless. But I'm going to wager it's going to be painful. Oh. Oops. Yeah, that would be an issue. Well, that's no good. Well, I'm down on time and probably not going to win this game. It's not so easy for him, but um, I think he's more than capable. Okay, I have to get my pawn out of harm's way, which actually weakens my center. Um, I assume he's just going to push. Okay. That's the one he chooses to push. Um, so now I just go back. Oh! Uh-oh. That's no good. So I have to get in front of his pawn. Uh, like so. And uh, maybe he's pushed too far and overextended, but probably not. Um, so we'll see if I can generate any pressure whatsoever, but my chances, oh, that actually helps my chances a little bit. Um, chances are still really terrible, but slightly less terrible than they used to be a minute ago. Just move the king toward his pawn, try to see if we can exchange where the king and the rook are. Um, it's probably not going to work. Let's 
Yeah, no, this is just lost. All right, well played. Dude. Unless you're saying you're a 1400, how do you know that a 1400 could win that as black? I mean, with enough time on the clock, sure. I've seen 1400s blow much worse, uh, uh, make much more terrible mistakes than that. I, I have to give my opponent credit for playing that well. <laughs> Let's not get emotional, he says. While characterizing... Uh, whatever. It's Friday. Now the move was queen e2. Suppose... I'm trying to think where in the opening queen e2 would have been the move. It would make sense for me to review my games if I were... Um, not just goofing around. It wasn't a refusal to resign, it was me playing moves quickly, and then resigning um, after I would played out a few quick moves. There's no point in resigning if there's still a little bit of the game to be played. Alright, so we got a queen pawn opening. Maybe I can play one of these. Um, I mean, people don't win games by resigning. And unfortunately, I guess, I've won too many that I should have lost, but... Um, Alright, so... I mean, this is a pretty typical Queen's Gambit declined, or accepted, or whatever it is. I've seen this position before, is what I'm trying to say. That it's not entirely unheard of. Um... So I think I'm just going to continue development. Um, um, so I can't prevent him from castling, nor he me. We're going to castle just to finish development. Uh, where do my pieces belong? I guess this could go on a half-open file. Try to discourage him from playing, um, e5, e4. Alright, I'm not just gonna let this run. So these kinds of positional struggles I'm not doing so well at today. And just in general, this is the sort of thing that I struggle with. It's just the positional grind. Um... Almost all my wins come from tactical shots, and so when I'm forced to play slowly and methodically, it's just a, quite a bit of a challenge for me. Um, yeah, so I think I could play queen d6. I think I'm okay. It's pretty spooky, though. I could maybe consider bishop d7 or even rook e6. Um, rook e6 doesn't seem so bad. Just stepping out of the pin, defending the knight. What's so bad about this? So... Um, I guess I played knight. E4? No, that would drop my D-pawn. 
Um, do I sack a pawn here just to get some activity? I don't see what else I can do. Oh, but he's got knight takes. Okay. Well, at least this allows my knight to move forward. Uh, yeah. What a mess. Um, so let's move this knight, hit the queen. Isn't so bad. I suppose I play f5 next. Okay, or we just develop the rook. So I control the dark squares now. I could play f5 if I want to. Or that's c5. I mean, why not, right? I could play c5 and then c4. And I'm controlling more space this way. Yeah, it's always challenging to give advice during games, especially if you can't see the move list too clearly or you don't know the move numbers. It's very difficult to communicate in this kind of format. Uh, maybe I should try playing slower games. So, where do my pieces belong? What's their home? I think I have to, this knight doesn't have a home. But if the knight's exchanged, then my bishop can take residence where the knight was. Um, I could even play queen b8 here. Start to, well... Or maybe I should target his king. That pawn on um, it's on h3 is a bit exposed. Oh, hang on. My rook's under attack. Uh, I should do something about that. Let's move it. Oh, my rook's defended, though. There was no need for me to move it. Although it's more active on this line, and I did want to move it anyway. But, um, there wasn't a need to move it, so it was just a wasted move, perhaps. Now, this kind of move invites him to go challenge and confront my bishop uh, with his bishop, like this. Um... He's apparently not directly challenging me on it. Maybe he's playing this as an intermezzo and then going to directly challenge me once my rook moves away. Uh, although, as bishop moves, I could just take the knight, and his king's a bit weakened. I mean, my center pawns are pretty strong. They exude a really strong presence, uh, denying both his rooks and his bishop and knight all these kinds of squares. Oh, wow. His only defender has moved away from the king. Does anybody smell blood, or is it just me? Um... It's probably just me, but... You know, I can be hopeful and wishful. Let's get my queen out of this pin. And over... Let's 
get it over here. Doesn't win on the spot or anything because he's just got knight takes bishop, and I, I really had no choice at this point. I had to go with this. Um, but I don't know. Just having the piece. Oh, that I did not expect. I knew it was a possibility. I knew he might do it, but I thought he would seriously consider like my queen move. Wait, my rook's under fire. What am I doing? Can't leave my rook under attack by the bishop. When did that happen? Did that happen back here? Here? Yeah, right here. I just walked right into it. Oh my goodness. Um, alright. So... Now what? I only saw that because I was threatened, considering trying to move my queen to hit his bishop and thinking where might the bishop go. Um, Alright, I think I have to move my bishop back. But what's he going to do to defend his h-pawn? I don't know. Uh, so it was around the time you said Rook that I made that uh, bad move, but... Uh, okay, so I need to find a way to continue attacking. Um, this knight kind of cuts his army in two. So now I'm threatening this pawn here. And my Rook could also take there. I did see when you said rook, and I didn't know what you were talking about. Because um, there were four rooks on the board, and I was just really confused. But you're absolutely right, that's the time at which I walked right into it. Um, it's my move? Oh, he played e4. I guess I just take it, right? What else can I do? I might have to do bishop takes e4 as well. Or maybe bishop takes h3. Although... Ooh, ooh this is complicated. I should have considered bishop takes h3 because that looks crushing. And now that I've let him do knight takes, um, my attacking prospects are kind of over. Although even here, yeah, any capture of the pawn, and I don't have any attacking prospects. So, shame on me for not considering bishop takes h3. Because most of my attack evaporated uh, when I failed to choose that move. We do have opposite colored bishops, meaning that the attacker has advantage, but uh, it might not be enough. Alright, so I want to just... nope. Maybe. This looks okay. Yeah, queen g3 might have been interesting, too. Um, for the same reasons that queen f2 was interesting, but... I think he might have had some discovery... Well, no, there are too many pawns in the way. He couldn't have discovered queen attacking queen. So yeah, queen g3 would have been very strong, also. Perhaps allowing me to force bishop takes h3. Now maybe then he just like plays king g1 and moves all of his pieces to the second rank and maybe everything's covered somehow, but um, I don't know. Okay, I've got to pin this. 
Oh, well, actually, my pawn's defended. I could consider this, too. So, lots of tactics are up in the air. Um, I think he's got everything defended. Queen takes rook, bishop takes queen, rook takes queen, pawn takes. Oh, wow. But that's not the only thing here. Um, lots of tactics are up in the air. I'm surprised he's moving so quickly. So now I'm doubling on this pin piece. Also threatening rook g6, maybe even rook h6. Um, this position's getting very loose here. If I were him, I would not be comfortable making such moves. Oh, okay, I get it, I get it. So we need to play rook h6 here, cover everything, and triple up on h3 square. Uh, shoot. I also had this possibility of bishop d6, um, discovering an attack over here. Oh! I have a free tempo, guys. You know what's going to happen, right? We're going to do that thing I just talked about. I think he has to take it. And then probably just to drop back here, uh, threatening to pin stuff on the first rank. Um, yeah, let's just drop back. So I'm threatening to exchange rooks. Um, not sure where my rook belongs. This is really awkward. All right, we're going to mess up my pawn structure in order to ensure that I have a viable end game. Yeah, no, I saw that. It's not at all concerned. We're going to exchange. Exchange here. Oh, wow. So now we have an endgame that's not terrible. In fact, I'm winning a pawn. So... Yeah, now I should be able to convert this. It's not just a matter of theory saying that this is convertible, but... Um, this is, endgame just keeps getting better and better. Is he going to play it out? He might. I think he was trying to win before the tournament ended, and he just got impatient. Where's my... oh, there's my king. Yeah! I won a game! Woo! Alright. 91st place. I'll take it. Any other of the day of the week? Maybe not. But today, yeah, we're taking that. Gotta enjoy our wins while we still have them, right?
play faster. Okay. Ah, wait, you're just talking about that particular game. Yeah, maybe I missed something. I probably almost certainly did. Um, okay, well, all these tournaments start in just a few minutes here. I don't feel like committing to another two-hour tournament. Not that I play all two hours, but I'm not going to commit to something that runs that long. Um, not going to do Bullet, because that would be just a little bit insane. I might try the Super Blitz. Oh my goodness. There's strong opposition here. I'm going to end up dropping out sometime in the middle of this, I feel. Um... But if I'm going to drop out in the middle of one of these, why don't I just play the longer time control? Yeah, let's... Let's consider the Blitz Arena. That way, in this kind of format, if I mess up, I don't have to suffer for more than five minutes per player. Um, so, that sounds reasonable. Also, if you want, I could do one thing I had set up prior to the stream. I could turn it on. Uh, yeah, let me turn flip mode on here. Oh, that's not lined up at all. Does that look fine if I go to, like, Leech Us TV? Yeah, okay, so at least the TV view looks okay. Yeah, I could enable this flip mode so the board looks sane to you guys. Let me know. I gotta say that this particular uh, style that I've invented, um, I don't know, I'm pretty excited about how it turned out. I'll just put it that way. I wonder if it works in 3D mode. Let's see, if I go to theming 3D, yeah, no, it's, everything's still flipped. But nobody, not very many people enjoy the 3D mode view, so we'll leave it in 2D mode. Fourteen, thirteen, twelve, eleven, ten, ten nine, nine, eight, seven, seven six, six, five, five four, three, two, one, zero. Zero, negative one, negative two. Oh, here we are. All right, King Pawn. Let's do this. Ah. Oops, that's a Petrov. It's not what I normally play. How'd I end up here? Alright, um, sure. Okay, let's see if he dares sack. And if not, I think I just repeat this shot against him. Okay, but now you just take your knight, and um, leave your king here, please, or castle king side. Either one <laughs> would be fantastic. He's not going to do either of those. But yeah, no, I think this is the winter game, more or less. Um, it's pretty darn similar to the winter game, you've got to admit. Okay. So now I'm threatening attacks on F2.
I mean, my pieces are way more active than his, so I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Although the road to get there was anything but sound. Saw that a mile away. And now I castle, right? Oh crap. Uh, uh, okay, I can't calculate that the board flipped like this. We're going to say that that was a deliberate pawn sack, which it totally wasn't. Um, but it apparently is semi okay. So just try to make our best of the situation and take free stuff. What a game. All right. Now where's the bishop going? Can I play rook b8? Do I have mega tactics there? No, I don't. Uh, Rook B8 looks fine on its own, but it um, does not win. It doesn't actually hang anything immediately, so it's okay to play. Yeah, now I just take here with the bishop. Um, if he pins me, I pin his rook. So, GG? Yeah, the minute I start speaking in coordinate notation, all my pieces start hanging. So I'm going to very carefully avoid the use of coordinate notation. I take the thing, he takes my thing, I run, he takes my other thing, I take his thing. Uh, such great commentary. Poor fellow, though. Alright, I'm preparing rook takes g2. I'm that confident about this position that I'm going to talk about it in coordinate dictation again. Actually, rook f2 forces mate. Oh, as does rook g2. So, um, if he plays queen b1, trying to do a queen trade, instead of just taking the queen, I just do rook f2 and mate. Um, yeah, he doesn't have a single check here. Um... So check, and checkmate, nice, not too shabby. <laughs> yeah, that's basically what chess is, just take all the things. Also welcome Zish. So, I mean, I'm guessing this has probably noticed that something's different about this particular setup. Um, there's no way that this subtle detail has eluded him for so long. Uh, let's bishop c4. Yeah, that's more than just the knights. That's, uh, I mean, they do stand out a bit. 
I was actually considering trying to find a way to flip the knight icon so that it wasn't so obvious what was going on, but I decided against it. Uh, do I play a4 here? I mean, what else could I try? We're gonna do a4. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the key point, is that um, a whole lot of mirroring going on. Uh, you know, I kind of wish that this were an official leech us thing, where we just mirror everything for you. Just to give you a bonus challenge, um, but whatever. That's completely uncalled for in terms of professional chess, but... It's a fun little extra challenge, uh, just for ending the week. So, I think I play knight h... Ooh, knight h5 is tempting, but not quite. Nope, that doesn't cut it. Let's play king h2. And just march forward slowly. Unless my opponent manages to hang something. Yep, so uh, that's predictable. I think he's planning f4 next. Um, I'm going to take this. And I've got queen h5. Yeah, right. It's yeah. The only thing that's a bit confusing about it is the way the pieces move. Um, just you have to move the piece that uh, the way you move the pieces is not what it looks like on the board. Um, okay. Well, I'm gonna check him. And then we go back. I think everything's covered. I still have Queen H5. Oh, he's got his own threats. How about that? Well, this is the only thing I can do to stop said threat. But now I can plant uh, my bishop on e4. Maybe even land my queen there and then shuffle to h7. Um, this is a cascading style sheet. It's a user style. Um, it took like two or three lines of code, basically. But you had to f figure out exactly how to do those two or three lines. It just applies an X flip to the entire board. However, the way Leech Us uh, registers the moves is based on where the pieces are actually located. Um, so... I don't know how to explain it other than when I click on the pieces, or when I click on squares, the pieces may or may not be there. Um, Really confusing for an end user. It wasn't the effect I was going for, uh, but it was so much greater that you know, I just decided that, you know, I just have to do this. It's too good to pass on. <laughs> yeah, basically just the visualization of the board changed, but uh, how you actually play the game is the same. Um, so... Uh, no, I gotta take that, right? I could take c7, but that doesn't look anywhere near as fruitful as going for mate. Um, queen e4, 
Bishop g4, Queen h7, King f7. Um, oh wait, no, this is fine. Um, just have to click on my queen and move it. The key point is that if he takes my pawn, which he doesn't, if he did, I would have been okay. Um, Ah, it's perpetual check. My bad. I was trying to trap the queen, and I forgot. You could just do that. It's perpetual check at best. Possibly a lot worse. This could get really bad really quickly. I was trying to trap the queen, and I got greedy. Uh, but yeah, moving the pieces the way I'm moving them and looking at the board this way is extremely disorienting. Um, so of course I heartily recommend that everybody do it. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, we're going to trap the queen for realsies this time. And I'm not sure what he can do. Okay, that's a thing he can do. Alright, so let's get this off the back rank. Also attack b6. Um, all right, b6 is hanging. If I can just manage to move my knight on top of it, then I can take it. Uh, I'm just going to go for mate. Got to make all the crude threats in the world because I don't have time to figure this out. Crap. Oh, I miscalculated again. Knight protects the bishop. Yeah, I think it could safely resign that. There's no way I can keep up with the tempo of the game. It's too fast. Uh, so he got me. Alright, let's see if we can win this one. I'm going to need to pick some better openings. Like the King's Gambit. Oh. Okay, we're going to play a sideline of the King's Gambit. Let's play this sideline. The I'm really going to sack this pawn, and you can't stop me from sacking it sideline. Um, Alright, so bishop d3. Mm-hmm. 
you install anything on the server? Not that I remember. Okay. I'm trying to figure out why a certain package installs correctly on the server, but not in any of my vagrant boxes in basically the exact same environment. Hmm. I don't know. So, you played chess before, right? Mm -hmm. This out. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <It's> drug chess, man. <laughs> oh, man. It's extremely disorienting, as you would expect. Uh, uh, Just think of it like you're shooting the piece out of a rubber band. Uh, oh. Yeah. Okay, now I get it. Yeah. I thought you clicked on the piece and then it would... Okay. No, 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 no. This is way more confusing. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, it's going to take my pawn. This it's just, pawn. It's just mirrored? Yeah. Just mirrored. It should be a quarter turn. Like a rotational. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is way too disorienting. I've <laughs> dropped all my pieces pretty much every game playing it. <laughs> it's is that a server sided thing or is that a like it's, a JavaScript thing? It's running? uh castigating style sheet. It's just exploit. So your opponents aren't using that. No. Okay. Well, why would anybody use it? <laughs> this should definitely be in the source tree. Yeah. So. I've entitled this... Though it is quite good that you did this in CSS. Yeah. That's some wizardry. It's portable, man. Yeah. Uh, let's go checkmate him. It wasn't even what I was trying to do. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. So I take this pawn... I get my queen over there somehow. So nice. Um, These rated games? Yep. Wow. But no, I'm playing somebody's rated 1784 here, so. Uh, against 2000s and above, it's just over. There's. Like, one time I got in some advantage and then I dropped a rook. It was a beautiful game. By accident? Yeah, we'll say that. Because you did a quick move and then... No, it's just I didn't even see what was going on. So oh. this is check. My okay. opponent didn't see the check, and now I'm threatening the rook. But also I've got mate in one or something. <laughs> I like how you did the highlight. <laughs> yeah. Um... Where's my checkmate? Oh! Oh, well, this is fancy. Threatening mate over here. Let's move the rook up. Oh, he checks me with his queen. But no, my rook can take the queen, or my knight could. It's not forced mate, because he's got the queen sack that throws away the queen. Sigh. But no, it's a winning tactic, so I can be happy with it. Well, my opponent seems a bit confused. I should play the King's Gambit more often. It's just gonna win a game like this. Yeah, initially I tried to do this sort of flip thing just in OBS. And, um... Oh, okay, so he's gonna sack his queen. 
All right, I'll take it. Actually, we tried to do this in OBS, and then uh, the text flipped on the page, too. So I had to rule that out. This is way cooler. You just have to be very careful to move your pieces to the right squares. Like, really super careful. <laughs> so far I've not moved them to the wrong squares yet, but I have lost some on time. I've played dumb moves because I don't know what's going on, but... What uh, CSS tag did you apply? I think it's called... X flip or something. It's it's not flip. It's is uh, it uh, like X direction or no? No, it's just a generic X. Um, oh, transform some kind of X transform thing. Yeah, transform horizontal. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> but it doesn't apply to the JavaScript that runs on the chessboard. Yeah, no, it just applies to the visualization of everything. God. Wait. That's awful. Okay, this is... <laughs> I recognize this opening. This is the scotch opening. Uh, so I played my bishop to c5 to defend the d-pawn. Castles quickly. I, too, want a castle at some point. Um... But I also don't want to give up my center for nothing. Ooh! Holy moly. What's that? I don't remember this part. I don't remember this at all. What's this part of the scotch opening? So I stop him from taking an f7. If this is a line, I'm going to be shocked. I find it really hard to believe that this is a line. Oh, I could have also played knight e5. Although my knight's easily evicted, but... I don't know what my opponent's doing. Yeah, I guess this might be the tilt variation of the scotch opening. I don't know. You should rotate the board 180 degrees. Yeah. Or 360 yeah. degrees. I think uh, even the first of those two wouldn't be as disorienting as this. Well, 180 would be harder. No, because chess players are accustomed to that kind of perspective. This is something you never see as a chess player. Yeah, no, but the clicking thing would be opposite direction. Yeah, no, that's not so bad. It's rotational symmetry. Um, <laughs> a radial symmetry. Right. Yeah, I don't know what my opponent's doing, man. Why don't I just play bishop g4? Like, that would have been cool. It didn't win a queen or anything. I wish it would, but... Um, that's a bit much to ask for here. I don't know, this, I mean, I'm doing fine overall, but Bishop G4 would have been a fun way to continue attacking. I guess I am leaving open the possibility of Knight G4. Um... Uh, 
Did I just get my king out of here? Or can I kick his bishop? Yeah, we're just gonna divert his attention for a moment. Um, if I can get the bishop off the diagonal, that makes this task a bit easier. Could have also played... Oh wait, that would have walked into a pawn fork. Um, Alright, let's get out of this discovery. Also, apply a pin accidentally. And potentially have a discovery against the rook on h1. Um, oh, don't want to move the knight. Moving the knight gets us mated. Um, let's hit the rook, though. I might have to move my bishop in a minute or two, but for the time being, it's fine where it is. Just hit the center. Um, I mean, arguably I could have moved the other rook, but I don't know. I'm not sure what's going on here. <laughs> I am worried about my f7 point, but that seems pretty well covered too. I just take that pawn, right? I think I have to. Um, let's take it. Now I have to march my king this way. Even though it's scary, I think it's the only way here. Ah, no, so, uh, tactics are complicated. So if he takes my pawn in the center, I have to run with my queen. I can't just take back. Oh, wait. In, hmm. No, his bishop on h7 protects my queen. I'm okay doing this, because there's too many pieces between the queen and the king. So he can't take... Uh, yeah, he just has to run. Giving me a turn to move my queen. Uh, or move my queen. Um, and then... Just use the rest of my pieces. I have to be careful about any pieces that are on light squares because of this bishop, but I think overall I'm pretty well defended. I just move my king back. And what's been accomplished here? Um, he had a nasty discovery I kind of missed. His discovery's the, with the rook here. Uh, yeah, it just moves the bishop away. Um, I have to block. So I'm getting mauled here. Oh, that's checkmate. Wow. Okay. Well, that was interesting. I did not see that. Well, we'll play one more. We can't end it like that. I have to admit, I didn't, 
don't know that line of the scotch, but I'm, it looked fine until I lost my king. Um, let's see, we'll play one more if we can get an opponent. No, this isn't an option. This is you have to install a plugin called Stylish and then design a uh, castating style sheet. It's not so trivial to do. Um, I mean, once you figure it out how to do it, it's pretty straightforward, but for somebody who doesn't have a programming background, it would take considerable time for me to explain how to do it. So it would have been awesome if this would have been like an April 1st thing for Lee Chess. Um, I don't have any tactics that win material. I just need to finish developing a castle. I might even castle queen side if he's going to throw all his pieces at the king side. Oh, well that's not expected either. So, whoops, that's not it. Just leave my options open until I have to choose one way or the other. So far, I can choose either direction. Or I could just leave my king in the center, too. It's option number three. Um, hmm. Maybe I play b4 here. Or g4. It seems a bit aggressive, but uh, how else am I going to advance? I don't know. It seems also reckless. Okay, my king is not well stationed on the queen's... Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's okay there. We're going to play this just to discover how it goes, which is a dangerous, dangerous philosophy. Um, let's play X to see what happens, but um, here I think my chances are better than his. I probably could have spent a tempo playing knight g f4 first um, before I castled, but... Uh, I don't think my opponent's picking up on such nuances. All right, I could take h3. I'm going to take h3. This forces his king, uh, flushes it out back toward the king's side. Uh, I have maybe knight g4 here. He's got nothing defending his king. So... Maybe he runs away successfully, but I don't know. Um... Now do I just play knight h2 and then knight f3? So knight f3 is mate on the move. Um, so he needs to find a way out of it. I'm actually really proud that I found this. Like really super proud that I've uh, found this I don't know. 
So a we'll really quiet attack. So maybe I play g3 here. Actually, knight f3. Uh, knight f3 doesn't force mate. It's really close. Actually, no. It, if he takes my knight, then I check him. So this is actually an immediate forced mate. Uh, he takes, and I take back. And then I'm threatening queen g2 mate. And there's no defense. I'm actually really proud of that. Let's look at that in the analysis board. Or request a computer analysis on it. But I'm pretty sure this was all forced. Um, at least toward the end of this. I think I was really onto something. Is there any white defense after this? If not, that means that I found what's... I mean, if he takes here, which he did, then I found what ended up being a mate in six here. Knight h2, the best move was f3, under which he's just dropping a knight. I mean, I could do queen takes knight, or I could go for this and win a lot more. So it's not a forced mate, but it's an extremely strong attack. Played knight f5, and was mated in short order. So that was pretty good. Wow. All right, I'm going to cool off here, just watch on a little bit of Lee Chess TV, and then we'll wrap up. So thanks to everybody for joining us. Hope you enjoyed. Um, I know I did. This is a good, fun thing to do on a Friday. I probably should avoid doing this most Fridays because it's going to confuse me, but... Um, it's good for variety's sake.